Every combi system has to have certain components as per the rules and regulations. And one of them will be a magnetic filter on the return pipe to stop any muck and rubbish going into the boiler from the radiators um, and the pipework and the system. Also, we need to ha have our anti-scale device to conform with the manufacturer's requirements about protecting the domestic heat exchanger. So first of all, we need to find out the pressure. So if we press the button and it's showing one bar pressure. So the next stage is going to be to drain the boiler down from here and never at the radiators so I can see what's going on. So all we're going to do is make sure that the filling loop is always disconnected from the pipework. So there's no chance of it overfilling unnecessarily and by accident. So all we're going to do is to remove that cap and put it onto the valve. Open it up and when the pressure goes right down to zero then we can turn it off. There is a gauge inside but you're not allowed to take the cover off unless you're gas safe or you work for a gas safe company. So we've gone down to zero, now we can turn this off and then we can just let that dribble a little bit and we can just close it off and now you can see I'll put the cap back on so to make sure that there's no dribbles that's the end and then I'll show you if there is any iron oxide um, it's been removed by the magnet inside here um, which has done its job so um, here's a close-up of what was in the bucket so before we can change that leaking radiator valve for this one or a thermostatic one, I'd just like to double check that um, the pressure I have reduced at the boiler and here's that uh, zero setting so we know the boiler and the pressure in the pipes and the radiators is at zero. So I've turned the flow valve off and I've turned this one off and the vent cap is in. So now let's see what the tools that we need uh, to change the valve. Firstly we're going to need a tray, uh, a bucket to, for at, to empty into the tray, plenty of kitchen roll, a pair of pliers, 24 mil spanner for the half inch BSP, some good grips, a uh, nice towel and clean film across the wall so we don't damage the wall because this water may be dirty. It shouldn't be but it may have a few specks. Um, so before we begin we're going to hold this in its place and we do the pipe. Always important to do the pipe size first because there's movement in the olive and this one will hold the valve into place. So we're just going to break the seal gently and undo that and then again if we put it on this side we can just gently press this and then we can see that there's some water coming out from here which is not too bad. Nothing much is going to happen this is live don't forget so we'll just put this water onto here and undo that nut we can put our paste on the pipes uh, etc so when we remove this pipe you can see it's just pouring out a little bit from there so we can put that on there make sure that we tighten up these finger tight that goes on there and then this one quickly goes on to here and then all we need to do then is finally, as again before, we're going to hold this end to tighten up this valve. And then that end will hold on to there. And then we can turn this on. And this is where our kitchen roll comes into place. We can tear some of this off to dry hands, dry around here, etc. So the only thing that remains now to do is to put some pressure back into the system and then go to the vent plug and vent this radiator and then we can switch the heating on first to whoosh it round, etc. Uh, we can use the stop end here to put our Furnox in, if you remember rightly, that we put into that air um, bottle we can pour our liquid in or pump it in with uh, uh, the Furnox cylinder ones. And really that's how we change it. And then I'll do another video on changing this valve into a thermostatic one. Mm -hmm. 